core network as we know are lying on the inside of wireless network because usually uh, we look we think of wireless networks as the um, wireless channel based connectivity but at the back end we have uh, the backhaul connectivity to the core uh, or the ip based infrastructure uh, we are going to look at and uh, understand how self organizing networks uh, based uh, enablement uh, allows our core networks to perform better and we are going to uh, look at a specific use case of auto configuration first of all we know wherever we deploy a self organizing network based um, framework this results into improved management so we are going to replicate the same for core networks as well in uh, uh, 3gpp guidelines particularly 4g and 5g we had the evolved packet core the evolved packet system involving certain entities uh, this uh, and since we start off with the e node b talking to the um, serving gateway the home subscriber station and the pdn gateway we uh, are looking at essentially the radio and the core networks as well so once we talk about the improvement of management functionality uh, using sons we are actually looking at an end to end mechanism involving both wired and wireless so we we'll, we we'll look at a specific example of uh, automatic uh, neighbor relationship based functionality that is neighbor discovery reachability connectivity um, we are specifically going to look at how the uh, x2 or the wireless mesh links are established between the e node b's uh, in the evolved uh, packet system uh, through the involvement of the mobility management entity which is at the uh, core of the uh, evolved packet system let's take the example of uh, uh, auto configuration we know that uh, hundreds of thousands of e node b's connect to the mobility management entities these mmes uh, are since on the core side so this involves uh, if we look at it from the uh, manage, management and administrative perspective, perspective the configuration is a very laborious task so how could we possibly involve uh, um, son uh, in setting up the the uh, starlink s1 uh, between the e node b and um, the mobility management entity let's look at the example here the e node b's which are numerous uh, would be uh, automatically using son providing their information like their own ids and the coverage in terms of cells that they have the tracking area to the mobility ent entity the mobility management entity provides an ip address to the e node b through which an entire process can be initiated and it is going to return uh, upon successful uh, configuration a uh, unique mme id that is its own id uh, the plms which are supported through the mme and the capacity which is being provisioned to this e node b relative to the other e node b's so this is a simple mechanism of auto configuration with the core entity similarly for automatic uh, neighbor relationship uh, the mme supports uh, or facilitates the configuration of uh, uh, the x2 interface between e node b's uh, this is very important because uh, any wrong uh, neighbor selection could cause failure of handover and even uh, uh, the call success probability also goes down so mme essentially acts as a transparent relay uh, from the e node b source e node b to the uh, target e node b so let's look at uh, a, a x2 interface establishment scenario uh, we are going to look at the figure but we can read it for our convenience so that you would be uh, having those keywords in your mind afresh once you look at the illustration so e node b detects that it has a new neighbor uh, to which the x2 interface could be established so it initiates the um, configuration transfer procedure uh, using a mechanism known as the transport uh, network layer so mme 
uh, is going to act as a middle a middle entity, middleman to forward the messages to the target in e B. And upon successful acknowledgement from the target in e B, uh, the source in e B um, uh, initiates the uh, TNL um, establishment procedure, and X2 interface is established. See here we have the configuration transfer procedure. The signaling process involves we have E node B1, E node B2, mobility management entity. The uh, requesting E node B sends uh, a request through the MME. Since we are talking about uh, self organizing network, so the encapsulation is going to be such that MME would not need to do deep packet inspection and it would simply relay it depending upon the uh, destination uh, E node B ID. And then it is going to receive the reply from the target E node B with the transport network layer configuration parameters uh, for the source E node B. And depending upon those parameters, finally, in uh, we can see in step number five, X2 interface, that is a mesh interface, is established between source and destination E node B. Uh, this reference has also been adopted from Seppo Hamelenen, nice discussion exists. If you are interested in further reading, you might like to have a look.